Hey, Bunny, guess what? What? No, you got to guess. You got to actually guess. Does this booger look right to you? Oh, Bunny, Bunny, my sweet, adorable little blue boy. No, Bunny. Your answer was wrong. Wildly wrong, in fact. But you answered with spunk, Bunny. (laughs) With vigor and spunk and a little bit of the good old razzmatazz. So that is our Pope on Film Answer of the Week. Bunny, you will be walking away with a $20 gift certificate to Circuit City, a sparkling Moore House jewelry set from Mervyn's, an (laughs) all-expense-paid trip to Vladivostok, and an all-you-can-eat dinner for two at Shawnee, Oklahoma's premier buffet, Bubba's Food Pouch. (laughs) Plus, of course, you will be going home with a copy of the Pope on Film Home Game, so congratulations, Bunny! Yay! No, it, it is homework time yet again on the old Pope on Film podcast. <clears throat> People of the internet, your attention, please. Cease your Facebook deleting and kindly pay attention! Each week, the dreaded Council of Ben Carsons descends from on high and selects a homework assignment for this podcast via the fiery ritual of carousel. A homework assignment that has been painstakingly chosen to better our listeners, nay, all mammals everywhere. But not you, kangaroo rat. (laughs) Sick of your crap. You're either a rat or a kangaroo. You can't be both, so just pick one already. As long as it's not a rat monkey. Yeah. And this week, we will be discussing our idiot president and how his dumb fat mouth ties into a forgotten 1978 NBC TV show entitled Space Force! Space Force. So here's the deal. On March 14th, our racist reality show host and failed businessman turned idiotic president addressed Marines at the Miramar Marine Corps Air Force Station in San Diego, Uh which which of course in German means a whale's vagina. (laughs) If you do not get that movie reference, then we cannot be friends. That is a fact. (laughs) So the president is saying a few words, and out of nowhere, and apropos of nothing, he starts talking about how we have an army and a navy and an air force, and we might now need a space force. Yes. It's freaking ridiculous, and it really makes me feel bad for the people in the Trump administration, because you're talking to them, <laughs> you're, you're discussing policy, discussing important topics, trying to drill the bullet points into them, training this baboon in a suit to actually know his own policies and, 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 and try and retain this knowledge. And so you're trying to teach him and you're trying to teach him and you're trying to teach him and he's retaining it well. But once he's alone on a stage with a microphone, he just forgets everything uh-huh. and st- Making shit up. Basically, he's our first toddler president. Oh, totally. Totally. He says that he's going to, oh, yes, I understand these policies, and I'm going to stick to them. Oh, wait, there's TV cameras. And then he just opens his fat mouth and just, we may even have a space force. We have the Air Force. We'll have the space force. What a freaking idiot this guy is. Yeah. To do what, exactly? It may be what I'm the only thing I can think of is maybe he finally got around to uh, watching Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. We need a space force to patrol the galaxy. We need to get our scientists to stop working on climate change and working on trees that can talk. (laughs) And is science going to get to work not on fixing the environment, but on getting raccoons to shoot guns? Yeah. Green people. Well, as it turns which, out, there. Which, also- okay, okay, let's get real here, okay? Okay. I would support that policy if everything that came out of his mouth wasn't a fucking lie. <laughs> yeah. Well, as it turns out, there already is a Space Force. It is a virtually unknown 1978 NBC TV show starring a vaguely handsome young Fred Willard. Yes. Making not only his first, his second appearance on this podcast, but also 
one of two appearances on this specific episode of the yes. podcast because he's also the freaking president in goddamn Wally. Yeah. So welcome back, Fred, and uh, get comfy because you're going to be here later. So it's 1978, and it's important to note that when this stupid sitcom came out, it was a banner time for space. Well, yeah, this was this was like right after Star Wars, where everybody pushed something out there. Yeah, because I, I got to find Wars, episodes of Quark. I used to watch Quark. Okay, so there was that. There was Star Wars. There was Buck Rogers. There was Space 1999. There was Battlestar BD, BD, Galactica. BD, wanna dance, Buck? Yeah. Uh huh. The surprising thing is is that there's virtually no information on the internet for this show, Space Force. Yeah. Which is odd, because there's something about everything on the internet. But there's virtually no information about Space Force, other than it, it's the 40th anniversary of the TV show Space Force, whatever that was, yeah. however many episodes there were. There's no information anywhere for this. So Which we don't amazing. we don't even know if it was an actual show. It could have possibly have been a pilot. Yeah, it could have possibly been a pilot that just aired once. It could have been a show that was on for a number of episodes where we're unclear about about the history of this show. Yeah. In, in fact, if a young Fred Willard, if a young Fred Willard hadn't been on the show, I would have been 100 percent convinced that this was just another one of those. Uh, uh, trending Jimmy Kimmel pranks. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But basically, what I'm saying is, Donald Trump says we need a Space Force. So there was a TV show called Space Force. So this is my theory. By watching the show Space Force, we can see our future. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So this is our future under the Trump administration. All black people will be hiccuping constantly. <laughs> yes. There will be one token female in every group. Uh -huh. Just one. No others. <laughs> Just one token female. All robots will be German. Yes. German robots with German accents. I kind of like the robot. Also, whoever's in charge of communication in the Space Force has to be like a Bowery Boys type New Yorker. Yes. <laughs> We're getting the call in on the intercom. The only problem is I'm talking to my mom. She's making up a sauce. <laughs> you know? Uh -huh. Black dudes are going to have hiccups. Uh, lieutenants will be occasionally monologuing. Yes. And and apparently our future's jokes will all be written by uh, the writers of Hee Haw. Seventies <laughs> humor, nice and broad and safe and sanitized and altogether horrible. <laughs> oh, and let's not forget the very serious hard ass named Stoner. Yeah, the Stoner guy looked familiar, so I IMD beat him. Uh, the, the only information on this show uh, on the internet is the cast on IMDb, and apparently the the hard ass guy in charge named Stoner. He was in. A, I knew he looked familiar. He was in Electric Company. He was. Yeah, and okay. even that, like I, I vaguely. Rem the only thing I remember from Electric Company was that there were Spider Man segments, and a young Morgan Freeman was teaching kids how to rhyme yeah. while dressed all jive. But since then. I have watched their ridiculously catchy and altogether stupid song, Billy Lick a Lolly, about a hundred <laughs> times on YouTube. Oh, man. Okay. And forced my kids to listen to Billy Lick a Lolly because it's the most ridiculously stupid song. But once you hear it, it's stuck in your head forever. Yeah. Like, like, like a disease. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah. He was Billy. He was licking a lolly. I was really proud of that. I loved him. But my theory is frighteningly accurate. Basically, yeah. the stupid TV show is an accurate look at what our future will be if Trump succeeds. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Space Force would be incompetent. Yeah. Space Force. It will like look. Space it will look like its production is rushed. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Um. 
there'll be a lot of poor decisions. Yeah. Poor, poor decisions. Uh, the more I think about it, I think we may be on to something. I think this may just be a pilot. Yeah. Yeah, because I don't see any other episodes. I see no other proof of this show's existence. Yeah. I have I have been involved with two pilots. Yeah. Which was which was kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh the first I was coming home from Manhattan. I was coming home and, and I was stopped at outside of Penn Station. And um it, it it was somebody collecting people for a focus group for a pilot television show. Yeah. And I was like, that sounds like fucking fun. Let's go do this. Uh, and it was for CBS and they brought us into a room with a big screen and, and chairs that had buttons, you know? Okay. So throughout the show, you're going to, you're going to rate, what you're seeing between like one and five, I think it was, or one and three, I forget. And they showed us a, a pilot for a show called Murphy's Law. Star that sounds familiar. Starring Michael Keaton. Ah, okay. And it was okay. I don't know. I might watch it again. I might not. You know, these were all the kind of questions that we were asked. So that was fun. So um, if that show is never on the air, thanks, Mike. <laughs> um, another one, uh, when I was living in Binghamton, I got a phone call and it was like, are you interested in wa watching a pilot episode of a TV show? And I was like, why, yes. Um. <laughs> And they were like, okay, well, well, we are going to, we're going to pump it through on channel whatever, whatever the local cable access channel was. Yeah. And it, I forget what the name of this show was, but this show was really rushed together, like I think Space Force was. And Space Force. I, I, I don't, I don't think she was starring, but it had Judy Landers. Okay. Is is like all I remember. And then after the show, they call you back and they ask you what you think of the show. And that's and that's it there. Huh. But that's I, why. I, but that's why I think Space Force is, a, is looks like a pilot. Yeah, no, it definitely looks like a pilot. But I have no proof of that. I I just don't know because yeah. there's no information at all about this. You know? Yes. It's freaking weird. But anyway, that is it for homework this week, and we really honestly hope so on realistically. We hope that your eyes, minds, and secret fetishes have all been suitably opened. Ah, but don't think you're getting out of here that easily, Buck Chacho, verbal copyright 2018, the Pope on film. I'm a, I'm a podcast listener. I'm getting out. You're a podcast listener? Okay. Don't forget next week's homework assignment, and for next week, we are watching, and I apologize for this, volume one of a Christian kids video uh -oh. called Salty. P-S-A-L-T-Y. He's, he's, yeah, he's, 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 a, he's a singing psalm. What did you say? There's, can we watch Bible Man? Oh, I've already done that. We've already done Bible Man. Is it good? Is it worth it? P-S-A-L-T-Y. Salty, the singing songbook. He's a psalm he's that sings. Uh, it 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 may rot your brain. Anyway, Bunny, I'm sending you the link to Volume One. Okay, thank you. Volume. <laughs> volume One. Yeah, there's a bunch of these. There's a bunch of these. You see, he's a he's a walking singing. Stop. <laughs> like oh God. Book of Psalms. Oh my God. Here, let me see. How right there. Yeah, right. There. Oh no, it's like oh, an old no. Christian kids show, I think from the 80s. Possibly the 90s. But that's next week. That's homework next week. Oh, it's okay. So be sure and join us next week for more homework with the Pope on Film podcast.